In this edition of Detroit Performs, the art of brewing exudes pride in Detroit. One of our slogans is, is we, we're bringing Detroit everywhere. And uh, it's showing, and uh, the Detroit name does very well. You know, we're gritty, we're resourceful, we're blue collar, we're hard workers, we like to have a great time. So it's, it's very rewarding. A college student helps to beautify Detroit's Brightmore neighborhood. I made a piece that not only I can be proud of as an artist, as a person, on a personal level, but also that the community can be proud of. Credit Card Detroit shares with us another citizen review. Magenta Giraffe is providing a place for playwrights to hear their work and audiences to provide feedback. And it's great for the playwrights, it's great for the actors, it's great for the community. So I'm really glad that they are offering this. A letterpress studio mixes their love of food with their printing events. In addition to producing work on the letterpress, the space serves as a gallery. It's a creative and intellectual hub uh, within the city, and I feel it really, it really fills a void. And a chef reveals the fine art of making sushi. Food is, is in the forefront of the performance, but it's also relative to how it translates from the server and from the sushi chefs, and just how it's all integrated, and the juxtaposition of the dishes. It's all ahead on today's episode of Detroit Performs. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Detroit Performs, everybody. I am your host, DJ Oliver, and we are back at Detroit's Eastern Market. In the heart of Eastern Market is a six block public market that has been feeding Detroit since 1891. Our first segment features a Detroit brewery, which shows how creating something people really enjoy is not only an art, but produces an immense amount of Detroit pride. Art and beer is individual, and that's why there's so many breweries in the, in the state of Michigan, over 110, and, and customers love that too. So each individual brewery has their own story, you know, has their own beers that they make, and uh, that, that's the true art of it, because there isn't one beer that's alike. It's something that people will go out of their way to purchase or to try. Breweries have become um, destinations, travel destinations for people. People will go out of their way to find beer at the source. Yeah, I would compare brewing kind of like being a chef where you have all these different ingredients available and you want to find the right combination to make a beer just the way you want it. And then it's also very rewarding when you make a beer that you like and you find out all these other people like it too. No one started with 100 barrel tanks like, like, like places are moving into now. It all started very small and very, um, again, hands-on is, uh, is the best way to describe it. So you've got your uh, palette of ingredients and you've got your equipment and you're blending it together in, in a unique way to create a unique product. I think it's what separates craft beers from like the huge mega brewers is the fact that the, the mega brewers are just making, you know, very light, plain beer that, you know, appeals to just about anyone. Like, you, it's hard to dislike one of those big beers because there's not a whole lot of flavor to it. And people who like craft beer are looking for something more. So we have different types of grain that we use that make it darker or roastier, uh, we have different hops, we can add a whole lot of hops, make it hoppier. Um, you're more and more getting into like sour beers, like Belgian style beers that are made in the US. So all these different things that have very distinct flavors that aren't for everyone, uh, but they're more of like a, a gourmet product really. 
we could easily uh, just make vanilla java porter and dirty blonde and, and do nothing else and probably still sometimes struggle with meeting the demand. But as you, you like, everybody likes, as, as an artist and, as, and in that realm, you always like to spread your wings a little bit a little bit and just and see what else you can do you want to you want to test your own limits test your the limits of your equipment and it allows us to have a little bit of fun get all these different ingredients you can mix together in different combinations give you different results and you can just play with things from there and alter things you know you can come up with a, a simple beer and then come up with variations of that beer I mean it's you know it's endless how far you can go with it dozens of types of grains and hops and processes you can use and uh, different strains of yeast and you have to learn them all and figure out which which of these will give you the flavor that you're looking for so that you can come up with a creation really what is what it is that's unique to your brewery. We really kind of cover all the bases. We have approximately 30 approximately 30 different labels that we produce, whether it be all year round, occasional single batch production or seasonal, uh, seasonal production. It's nice to make something that people appreciate and people really enjoy. Like when people really like one of our beers, they become big fans of it. It's not just something that's convenient or cheap or they're buying it because they really like it. And we're still doing things where we grab the 50 pound bag of malted barley and we're putting it into the mill to grind it and you know it takes at least 17 of those to make a batch sometimes more uh, and we're throwing in the hops right into the pot just you know just by hand everything's kind of by hand so uh, it's different than like I've done tours of some of the huger breweries in this country and you hardly see any people there you mean you might see as many people in one of those as you see in one of these small breweries uh, because everything's automated here you know everything's kind of done by hand even the bottling part of it it's loaded and unloaded by hand and i think that's the big difference i think there's lately a lot of pride in detroit in the city that's taken a beating over the last few years but everyone i think is starting to stand up and say this really is a great city a great old town and it really gives you, I think it means a lot to people throughout the Detroit area and throughout the state that this is made right in the city of Detroit. One of our slogans is, is we, we're bringing Detroit everywhere and uh, it's showing and uh, the Detroit name does very well. You know, we're gritty, we're resourceful, we're blue collar, we're hard workers, we like to have a great time. So it's, it's very rewarding. I like it when I sit down at the bar at the end of the day or take home a bottle and I, like we just had our blueberry cobbler beer and I took one gulp of that and I knew it was just right on. It was just like dessert in a bottle. So it's always a satisfying thing. You know, I guess I suppose it's true for whatever you do. If you're working on something and you complete it and you know it's good, it makes you feel good. This is more than just a homebrew. This is something that you can go to any store and people talk to me about beers. People all around Detroit have heard of it and tell me they love the beers and it feels good to, to say yeah I made that. We know we've gotten it right when, uh, when we need to make more <laughs> and we can't make enough. To learn more about Atwater Brewery head to DetroitReforms.org.